Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who we got on the uh, on the old horn here? <laughs> Aren't we doing it with them? Oh, you know, oh, yeah. Charlie, we're we're this is the intro of the podcast. I know I, I know that, but I thought he did, didn't somebody call in from Midwest Star Pack? Oh, okay, got it. All right. Well, boys, maybe you should be a little bit more clear. Maybe you put put that energy you got into laughing right now about being more clear with your setup. Okay, how's that sound? How's that sound, <laughs> fellas? Huh? Yeah, I, I think we should just keep this in. Yeah, go ahead, keep I it in. I think we should just keep this in. Yeah, keep it. Hey, folks, welcome to the Belly Up <laughs> Podcast, where communication Who are we to? communication is never I, key. There's no one on the line, Jared. He's, uh, I thought. Oh, you were, oh, okay. Now I'm getting roasted. We haven't had any food the, the all, all day. Our patrons are now belly laughing, Charlie. Oh, there you're laughing at me. But, Miles, you set me up poorly. So, anyway, folks, what you were listening to there is a little behind the scenes on the Bellied Up podcast where, you know, Jared uh, tells us the callers and then we kind of pick a caller. But he was telling us intro topics. Yeah. What's so today's we intro guys, topic? Welcome back. Um, today's intro is topic is the midwest starter pack the midwest starter pack all right all right so charlie what's in your midwest starter pack well first and foremost miles i feel like you've got to have an ice scraper i know that's gonna sound pretty basic but an ice scraper ladies and gentlemen first of all you do not choose the ice scraper the ice scraper chooses you you've seen harry potter just like the wand an ice scraper is crucial, not just for scraping off your windshield, but we don't pay for therapy in the Midwest. No, we talk to our bartender or we just get our anger out on the ice on our windshield. So I would put an ice scraper in there. Miles, what would you toss in? There? I would throw in a car that's covered in uh, like dried snow and sand and dirt in the winter. <sighs> and then you pair it with... Someone writing "Wash me" on the window on the back. Gotta do it. You gotta do it. Did, did you ever like? I think that you know what I'm talking about. Yes. In the winter, the slush gets all over the side of the car. The salt from the roads are all over the side of the car. It's almost like Midwest decals. I, it is. I like that. You know what? I'm I'm just getting excited with you describing this car too, because especially like a one day, 24 hours after a fresh snow. You know, when when the, the, the ditch snow is a little black and stuff, yep. maybe two days, maybe three days. But you always get that that little uh, slush bunny between the wheel and the oh, wheel yeah. well. The, the just just tapping your foot on that and watching it just fall off in a big chunk is one of the most satisfying things. I want to see an entire YouTube channel of just people clearing out the snow between their wheel and their wheel well. That's what I want for my birthday this year. I'm going to get you that, Miles. I just want a lineup of cars that all have the little slush built up behind the tire. And I just want to, for my birthday, I just want to walk by and just kick kick them off on every single car, like 30 of them in a row. And luckily for you, you live in Fargo and your birthday is in March. It's so, a perfect time. Yeah, it's going to be a blizzard here again. Um, that's cool. I like that. Good ad. You know, another thing I, I we need in the Midwest starter pack you need a pocket knife. Everybody needs a pocket knife. You got yours on you right now, Miles? Oh, oh, you want to know what's sad? You want to know what's sad, you Miles? Had this exact one. I had that knife. Guess what happened to it? TSA. TSA. <laughs> It I went away. I've These are both Buck Knives. Shout out to Buck Knife. Uh, that, um, that Not a sponsor, but cool knives. Um, this is how I flip it up like that. Oh, that's cool. You like that? I have that one as well. Yeah. I kind of. Do you flip it up like that too, or are you lame and you kind of... No, I like going like this. Oh, let's see how you do it. Oh, oh yeah. This isn't oiled up like mine is. Yeah. You know, the... There oh, there know. you go. Oh, that's kind of fun. I like that. Let me try. Oh, geez, that's not good. That's how we cut our hands. Fling, gonna fling in my there eyes. we go. That's fun. Yeah. I'm going to try it more like that now. That's cool. Uh, I just really like, uh, have you actually this, this knife, I was ice fishing and I filleted a wall, well, uh, not a wall, a perch uh, with this buck knife. 
Now, I don't ever recommend filleting a perch with a buck knife, but no. in a pinch, you can do it. And I, I, I'm going to tell you this. I did a fillet that my dad would be proud of. My dad would not have been expect, inspecting that perch being like, you left too much uh, belly meat on it. So, did or not job. belly meat, just leaving too much on the thing. You don't really want the belly. You want to kind of cut that off a little bit. At least I do. You did a good job, though. I, I, you know, I'm not here to, uh, to, to pump my own tires, but... You know, no one's here to pump them for me since we started this podcast off with you jerk faces laughing at me. So anyways, yeah, I'd put a pocket knife in there. Nice little pocket knife. Miles, what else would you toss in? I think I'd also throw in the monthly bar tab. There's not a lot of places in the U.S. where you can have a running tab and pay the invoice at the end of the month like you're, you know, a retail store. And Miles, what is more satisfying? I'm going to go ahead and say nothing off the top than winning in pull tabs and just saying, put that on my tab. It's like it's like paying down a credit card. You're like, oh, this is just, I'm going to pay that down now. You're yeah. not going to be able to pay it off because <laughs> that's the thing with monthly bar tabs. Yeah. You never pay it off. No, you, you just pay it down a little bit. It rolls the next over. next weekend, you come back in and you shoot it up again. Mm -hmm. And what I love about uh, Midwest bars, I let you run a tab. They're not at an interest. No. no, they're just interested in you coming back. That's right. And, and that's what we love. And they can realize those losses on their taxes, I think, you know? Yeah, they can just be like, they, it's just a byline that says miles is tab, yep. you know? And and the IRS just doesn't question it. They're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. It's like three bars. Um, uh, another thing I want to throw into the Midwest starter pack is um, uh, fishing line. And because the fishing line has many, it, it, a fishing line is basically a multi-tool. Um, you can use it to uh, floss. You can use it to cut a banana. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use it for fishing. You can use it to hang decor. Have you guys ever seen a fishing line chandelier? My mom hung some stuff in her house with fishing lines. It's invisible. Yeah. It's not just invisible to fishes. It's invisible to us. You can, know, you can use it as a belt. You can absolutely use it about, and this is strong stuff. And if you get that threaded fishing line, mm -hmm. dare I say, you could probably, uh, you could probably could hold my pants up. You could hold your slacks up. Yeah. You can use it as a, uh, you can tie a Christmas tree down with it. Yeah. Yeah. You could probably use it as a makeshift ratchet strap too, Charlie. You with a strong enough test. Yes. Yeah. And you know, it's not exactly like a ratchet strap. You're going to tie that down real tight. You're probably, you're going to go, well, that's probably going somewhere, but, but probably is the key word. Exactly. Possibly it's not going to. Mm -hmm. So just a few things in the old Midwest starter uh, pack. Anything else to toss in there, Miles? Um, <sighs> My head goes to a driving glove. Do you have a driving glove? I, you know, it's funny. I got a set of gloves on the dashboard at all times. Yeah. It's like, like well, I even have just one laying around so that when the steering wheel gets cold in the winter, you just put the one on. And then when you're holding the steering wheel, your hand doesn't get cold. I've never, I've never, I'm going to be honest with you. I've never done that. Um, I've just, I've just had the cold hands on the steering wheel, but I may start. And it's funny because those gloves are sitting right there. I could just toss those suckers on. Mm-hmm. But uh, I like that. I like that. I put gloves on to drive the car, but then when I get out, I take them off. Yeah, because you don't want to. Yeah, yeah. You, you Michael Jacksoning it while you drive. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of nice. Well, that's cool. I think we did a good job on that, Miles. Yeah, I think we did too, Charlie. Should we take some callers? Now we can take some callers. Who we got on the horn? <laughs> My name is Jesse. Hey, Jesse. Where are you calling in from? Um, I am calling um, from St. Texas. What? St. Texas? Like the, the town's name is St. and you're in Texas? Yes. Fate, F-A-T-E, like fate, full, fate, Texas. Fate. Fate. Fate, Texas. Yes, fate. Fate. Got it. Okay. Uh. We'll bell you up to the bar. What do you got in your mind? I wanted to ask for your guys' advice on what is the best way to get my mother-in-law to like me. Okay. So my husband and I have been married for eight, almost 18 years, a long time, <laughs> and I still cannot get her to like me. She just doesn't like me. How can I change her mind? Well, okay, Before, let's get a little backstory. Yeah. Right? What are some examples of why you think she doesn't like you? 
Oh, well, <laughs> um, uh, let's see. The biggest one is, well, she, there's no communication. She, like, never, ever talks to us, ever, ever. And, like, that doesn't sound way so back when we first got engaged, like, many, many years ago, she actually told my husband, no, you probably should still keep looking. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, like, a whole lot of things that over many, many years have <laughs> turned into this whole thing. She doesn't like me. And... I would just love to change that. And you guys are like always giving like the best advice. So I thought, hey, Miles and Charlie is. Really? We don't, we don't, we don't get that a lot. Yeah, we don't. What's her name? What's your mother-in-law's name? Her name is Marla. Marla. And Marla, we need Marla. You know, she sounds like a Marla. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I, you know, I've only, oh, yeah. yeah. Now Marla, does, so Marla does not like you, Jesse. Um, has she ever been uh, direct to you in saying that she doesn't like you? Oh, no, no, no. She can't be direct. It's very, very passive aggressive. Oh, she must be from the Midwest. Oh, yes. It's very, very passive aggressive. And like, she'll always say, Oh, I love you, but then she'll stab you in the back. <laughs> like, okay, here's a really good example. So years and years ago, a couple years ago, like two or three years ago, I I was running my first half marathon. And um, my husband, we were with, with his family one time, and my husband was with his mom, and I overheard him telling her, Jesse ran this race, and she got like... I don't know, fourth in her age division or whatever, which wasn't phenomenal, but it was a, I was proud of it. And her response was, well, how many people were in the race? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's maybe because so, my, when you said half marathon, my first thought was, why didn't you just run a full one? Uh, so maybe I'm not <laughs> the best to give advice in that scenario. <laughs> Um, so it sounds like you kind of half-assed it to me. Um, so maybe I should well, 13.1 miles is a lot of running. Uh, yeah, it's is. about as half as much as all the other people that ran too. Uh, <laughs> okay. So she, she is not overly aggressive to you, but she just kind of makes a lot of snide right. comments. Yeah. On the so side. let's dive into this, Charlie. What is she? Cause I think that you got to find some common ground and that can get people to turn around, right? If you watch the movies where this happens, all it takes is for them to connect on one thing and the whole narrative changes. So what does she like to do for fun? Um, well, nothing I like to do. She's very, very like pioneerish. So she likes to like grow her own food and sew her own clothes and do all the things that I don't like to do. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. So, so, so you're not willing to. You, you gotta walk halfway down. Give. give so she likes to grow her own food, sew her own clothes. She's kind of a hippie, huh? Not a hippie. I would. I would say like pioneerish. Like okay. yeah. old school. Well, I think what you're going to have to do is do what you did with that half marathon and meet her halfway. Yeah, and- sew her half a shirt. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to I'll have to try that. He's just like I would really love to have a great relationship with my mother in law, but oh, eighteen years is a long time to go back well, and try to start over. You also <laughs> could play the waiting game. How old is she? <laughs> I knew you were gonna say it, Miles. <laughs> Miles says everything she's, I'm thinking. She's pretty old. Okay. So you got she's, that going she's for you. probably in her late sixties. Oh, I know. Not that's old. not old. Not old that's enough. not old. She, you I was got... hoping for like an 80 mark, but. Yeah, is she healthy? Yeah, she's pretty healthy. Yeah, you're going to have 30, 40 years left with her. You better figure something yeah. out. You're still in the first period here. So, you know, so Charlie. Yeah. She likes doing pioneer stuff. What is some stuff that they could do together that may change the, the course of the wind here? I like where you're going with that, Miles. Let me ask, where's Marla live? Arizona. Arizona. Okay. Okay. And uh, does she does she like she likes growing her own food? Is she into she into weed or booze or anything? 
No, definitely not. She is very, very like my husband grew up on a uh, on a, like a dairy farm, uh-huh. and so they're very uh, traditional rural country people. Very traditional. Where very did, traditional. Where did she grow up? Where's Marla from? Oh, it's a little tiny town in in Arizona with like a hundred people. <laughs> it's like oh man, in the middle of nowhere. Got it. Is she religious? Very. Yes. What flavor? Uh, Christian. Uh oh, like non denom. No, like uh, like Mormon. Oh, uh oh. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you could bring her some energy drinks. Uh, you know, Mormons can do that. Cold caffeine. Send her a shipment of cold caffeine. <laughs> Charlie, I wish I could, but I don't even think she drinks caffeine or soda. Oh, she doesn't drink anything. Uh, send her a pan, uh, a, 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 a can of paint that she can watch dry. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> uh, dang. Okay. Well, so does she not like, let me well, ask you this. Why did she initially not like you? What, yeah, what, what did, did you, you do, do to corrupt her son? What did you do? Were you guys living in <laughs> sin before you got married? Yeah, probably. Well, that's exactly it. Uh-huh. It's from the very I married her baby boy and from the very beginning I was just never I was just never good enough. I was a wild wild college girl and and she wanted perfection, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> and I guess I'm not that. But on the upside I we're like like I said, we live in Texas and I have my husband and we have three kids. One of my sons, actually, my oldest son, who's almost 17, him and my nephew, who are obsessed with your podcast, so they're going to be listening to this. Oh, good. And they, well, I'll have to tell them, you can't tell my nephew, you can't show this to grandma, but. (laughs) She can't (laughs) listen to it anyway. She's Mormon. Yeah. No, that's Amish. Oh. Yeah. I got them mixed up. Same church, different pew. (laughs) (laughs) Same church, different pew. Okay. But, um, so my my kids, we live over here in Texas, and we don't have much, like, they don't know my kids very well. We don't see them. We don't talk to them. So they're not too involved in our lives, which is kind of nice sometimes. So that's the plus side of it. Okay. I think I got a good one for you. It's not, okay. I don't think you're going to love it, but it's a solution. I think you got to... You got to basically blackmail her. So you got to set up a scenario where she gets caught doing something that she's not supposed to be. You need to be there to catch her and then hold that over her head for the next 30 years. Oh, boy, like what? That's ambitious, Miles, because is she for sure like full-blown Mormon or you think she got some secrets in the closet? You think she likes... Oh, uh, I I think she... I don't think she has any secrets. No. (laughs) No. Dang, Miles, you're dealing with a no. Mormon. They they take that stuff seriously. They're they're like, uh, they're uh, they're in it. They're on it, man. You gotta um, just start doing stuff like, like just dropping like a twenty on the ground and see if she pockets it. You know what I mean? That could be. That could be. I, I like it. She'll probably say she's giving be it like, to hey. the church show. I'll be like, hey, Jesus wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see here. Could you send oh, her a funny. nice shirt and tie? Don't don't Mormons like the shirts and ties? Nice white shirt, nice tie. Well, well she wouldn't wear a shirt and tie. She's a woman. What do but... what do Mormon? I thought all Mormons wore the shirt and tie. What are the what do the ladies wear? The Mormon ladies just dresses. Well, can, can you sew her I a mean, dress? Not always. Here's what you do. You got can three I sew kids. Her a dress? I do have three kids. Make one of them sew a dress and send it over to her. Say it's from you. <laughs> also, we are let- that's actually not a terrible idea. We are letting your husband get off the hook here. <laughs> yeah, why isn't okay, your husband? Yeah, that's it's his idea. mom. Why isn't he standing up for you? What did he say after the the half marathon comment? <laughs> <laughs> so. It's actually a point of contention between him and I. So after he said that, he's like, oh, no, my mom didn't mean it that way. And I was like, oh. yes, she did. She absolutely meant it that way. Bye. My husband is like the most genuinely kind, 
good human being on the planet. He truly is. But he is so oblivious to other people's passive aggressive snide remarks. Like he just doesn't see it. He thinks everybody is kind and good in this world. Well, does when that I know otherwise. What if we uh did another half marathon meet in the middle? And maybe you're a little paranoid about it, right? So it happened one time, so now you think she's out to get you and you're reading too far into things. Is that happening at all? I mean, probably. Well, according to him, he thinks I'm reading too much into it, but I don't think so. <laughs> I think I'm 100% on the right track. He thinks he thinks that that our families are just two very different people, right? So, like, I'm used to my my parents who are very involved, and they don't live near me either. But we we have a lot of there's a lot of communication, and he's just like our families are just two very different people, what? and he thinks that. Yeah, I think Go ahead. you could take a page out of the Catholic book and just lie, and then go to confession later. <laughs> so what you need to do is you need to uh, set up a system with your husband. Now you know what she's like. You need to give her no way to make a snarky comment, right? So next time you run a half marathon, just tell her that you won and you beat everybody. <laughs> How is she going to know? That's actually a really great idea because she would never know. Exactly. What's she gonna, she's Mormon. She's going to get on her computer and look up the Again, results. Of the- Miles, Mormons <laughs> do technology, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, probably most of them that do, but I don't. I think my mother-in-law does not do a lot of technology. Like I said, Perfect. she's very pioneer. Why don't you? Here's what you gotta do. Then, okay, I got it. You gotta find yourself a um a good uh pigeon, okay, and get yourself a strong pigeon and tie two bags of seeds to the pigeon and uh, figure out how to get that pigeon over to your mother-in-law's and then she'll be thrilled that you sent her some <laughs> seeds for a garden on a, on a passenger pigeon. Uh, she would probably love that. Actually. Okay. That's actually a gift that she probably would enjoy. Actually, yeah. I feel like your mother-in-law would love Charlie. So I, you need to develop a mentality called WWCD. What would Charlie do? And then just only do and say stuff that Charlie would do because old people love Charlie. They think he's the sweetest. They think he's the funniest. They think he can't do no wrong. And you know why I know this? It's because my parents feel that way about him. Your folks are nice. My, I mean, Bud and Mary Jane and I go way back. My parents love Charlie more than they love me. That's and not true, so Miles. So all you got to do is do the WWCD. What would Charlie do? She's going to love you. I think you send her some seeds <laughs> and you say, uh, you know, since your son gave me his seeds, I'm giving you these. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> See how that goes. Oh, that, that's, she will probably shrivel up in a ball and be like, oh, I can't think about that. But that's phenomenal. That's a great idea. Yeah. Well, and you know what? You don't even need to write that on the note, but you know, you get enjoyment out of knowing yeah. that's why you sent her seats like, and as, she's like as you're releasing the pigeon out the window say that out loud yeah it'll be very therapeutic for you just don't send a <laughs> parrot they might re- re- tell her <laughs> so uh i know right yeah okay wwcd what else did you do charlie i get her a nice hoe <laughs> you know <laughs> send uh, send her a hoe get a mule strap the hoe to the mule and make sure the mule knows where it's going Slap get, it on the ass and tell her to get on his yep, way. Yep. Get get yourself a nice GPS, a phone that's gonna last about six or seven days. Put it on that mule's head, you know, with a carrot over it. It'll chase the carrot and then follow the directions. And it'll get there eventually <laughs> with a nice hoe. Now she's got a hoe for the seeds and you know. A mule to ride into town on. There you go. And the mule will be symbolic. Jesus rode in on a donkey, uh, an ass, you know. <laughs> Um, is she, uh, married? Oh, that's She's still with, uh, yes, she is. and what, what's the relationship with the father-in-law? Does he like you a little bit more or not? Not so much. Yeah. I can get along with him a little bit more. He's a little, le- he's a little more laid back. He's an, he's an old cranky farmer, but I do get along with him. Um, and he's just a little more, he's just a little more laid back. Mm-hmm. 
And I think if all this fails, I think you just need to say, fuck it. And just, I think you need to match her energy and then take it up another 10 notches. Now that's the Midwest I'm talking about. Mirror her. Just, just be a mirror for her actions. You know, tell her how many times you pray today. Is that it? Yeah, no, it's, uh, uh, how you got fourth place and a half. I prayed four. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah, tell yeah, send her a book of the of the uh ladder saints or whatever, the saints on the ladder and then um and then tell her that you're praying for her. She'll love it. Right? <laughs> they they got the ladder saints in uh Mormon, right? Or is that a different one? Is that Opus or not Opus Day? What's the other one? Where are you driving? What the hell's going on? <laughs> Sorry. Where? I'm getting in my car to go pick up my daughter from school. How old's your daughter? My daughter is nine. She's my baby. Oh, well, what would you do? Uh, um, hmm. Well, I, well, I got another passive aggressive. You, you just you just got out passive aggressive her. Yeah, send That's your it. kids to live with her for a summer. Yeah. Clash of the Titans. <laughs> oh, you got fourth place in a my half marathon. My kids are way too sweet. You got fourth place in a half marathon. How many people were in it? And you're like, I don't know, but at least I wasn't sitting on my ass knitting all day. Ooh. That's more aggressive. <laughs> That's straight up aggressive. Yeah, you're right. Does she like crochet? Yeah, that takes the out of it. Does she like to um, crochet? Uh, I know that she like either crochets or knits. I'm not sure which one it is because they are very similar to me, but she does one of them. Yeah. Send her a, a kit. And then when you show up right before Christmas, when you show up and be like, Oh, I thought you'd already have this done by now. Yeah, there you go. That's a good passive aggressive. I like, I'm I, getting better at the passive aggressive. Yeah, you know? yeah, not just aggressive. Oh, well, so let me tell you what I gave him for Christmas like multiple years ago. And I thought this was like years ago when it was like really huge, like the whole ancestry DNA thing was big, you know? And um, I thought it would be something they would love it because they're into that kind of stuff. I was like, that's a really great idea. I'm going to give them both one of those kits. So I did. I spent the money. I had it sent to them. And then like a year later, we were there and I found both of those same kits that I gave them right in the trash can. Like they didn't even use them. They just threw them right in the trash, but they waited a whole year. They waited. They they threw them out while you were there. So she (laughs) knew you would be seeing that man. Your mother-in-law is she badass. They didn't do it because they don't want the government to have their DNA. That's probably why. Yeah. I don't know why, but. Some I, people are scared they, to do that. I thought that. for sure they would love it. Some people. Yeah, uh, maybe that's what it was. Because sometimes some people have done that, found out they're married to their cousin. <laughs> that's probably, they're worried about that. <laughs> yeah. There was some murmurs when they got like, married. That yeah, they they're like. Kissing uh, cousins they didn't want. That's a <laughs> truth they didn't want to know. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of folks that figured out they were. And then that explains why your husband is the way that he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so. That is like, my, I told you, my son and my nephew are like your biggest fans and they listen to all your episodes like a hundred times. And that's probably their most favorite episode. My nephew, he like drives a tractor all day and he's always telling me, he's like, talks about the webbed feet episode. Uh, and yeah. then the other one that, the other one he always talks about is like the clappy. <laughs> the <laughs> which one? Miles is like. The clapping of the cheeks. Remember when it was, that was that. <laughs> oh, we got to remember kids are listening yeah. to this, huh, Miles? <laughs> They're going to learn it somewhere. Oh, Charlie. I know. <laughs> That's what I told him. I was like, well, you're going to learn this somewhere. You might as well hear it from Charlie and Miles. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, you know. Corrupting Midwest youth since 2018. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's the way it is. That's the way it is. But no, my kids, they are totally, they love it. They just love to well, listen to all your podcasts. Well, we appreciate it. Yeah, we do. How often do you visit these, these mother-in-law, father-in-law? Once a year? Not even that. Oh, like maybe once a year. Not very often. They would be like, I used to go there like in our early married days when my kids were young. We would go there. I would go there quite a bit because I wanted them to have a relationship with their family. And then they stopped. Then they were like, I realized they were never, ever, ever coming to see us. And so I was like, all right, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not going. I'm not driving 14 hours to go spend time with them if they don't want to come see us. So I quit. I quit going. And now we 
just stop on our way through sometimes and Here's like what, once a year maybe. I got one final piece of advice you can try out that I actually have real world experience on. I need you to make a game. Oh, I need you to make a game out of it. So I need you to maybe the game is you with your immediate family set an over under on passive aggressive comments on how many she's going to say while you're there and then you count them and make them a fun game out of a little it. Little bingo. Yeah. A little bingo. Maybe you have a bingo card too of stuff she said in the past. Is she going to say something shitty about me running? Uh huh. You know? And then you leave the bingo <laughs> card. You Once you get a bingo, before you leave, you, you leave you, it in the trash. No, you put it on the fridge. <laughs> yeah. And then the next time you come, <laughs> they'll put it in the trash for you to bring back home. Yep. Mima's passive aggressive bingo is what it would say at the top. Marla. I love that. Well, That's a great idea. You know, it's like when my mom's <laughs> on a new health kick, right? She she had a whole year where she loved talking about lectins. The hell's a lectin? Still don't know what lectins are, but it became a game of how many times yeah. she's going to bring up lectins on Christmas. You know, it was kind of fun. Many more fun. Lectin surgery? <laughs> Some Interesting. people that sell Mary Kay, how many times are they going to bring up Mary Kay? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's it's like hilarious. yeah, it's like people who CrossFit. How many times are they going to bring up CrossFit when you're talking to them? Just make a game out of it. That's a great idea. I really like that. Um, so I had like one other question I wanted to ask you. So my husband's 40th birthday is coming up this year in a couple of months in April, and um, I he's like really into like smoking meats, and he has a he has a smoker. It's a pit boss smoker. Oh yeah, and. He wants a newer, like he wants a more an upgraded smoker because he is like really great at it. He does a great job. So, what is your favorite brand of smoker? Oh, <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah, um, I don't smoke a lot of meats. I'm more of a grill guy in this. Um, so I will defer to Charlie on this one. Well, I've gone. Um, Are you a smoker? Yeah, I so. <laughs> You know, when we were kids, used to get these clams, right, out of Lake Winnebago. And you dig a, uh -huh. a hole in the, a trench in the yard a little bit. And then, um, you know, it's a multi-tiered thing and you, you get the coals hot on, underneath, right? And then you put a little grate on top. And then you get yourself uh, some sort of a contraption to close it up. But you don't necessarily need to do that, you know. But if you got one, that would be good. Like a trough you can tip over on top of it, you know, poke some holes in the trough. And then would you know it, after a while, they say those clams can't be eaten. They are wrong. <laughs> and so I would, uh, do you have a good shovel? Um, I, I'm sure he has one out there somewhere, yeah. I mean, you want to go old school. That's a nice way to do it. Now, in terms of real... Well, I think he's trying to go less old school. Less no, old school. I, hey, you just need to... The, what Charlie just said there, you need to tell your mother-in-law that's how you guys are smoking meats, and she is going oh, to love it. See how this comes full circle? See how this comes full <laughs> circle? What did I tell you? Just do what Charlie does and says she's going to love it. Look what I got your husband for his birthday, and she'll just see the trench dug out in your yard, you know, and she'll be like, wow, I have I have misjudged. <laughs> I was so wrong. This daughter-in-law. I I have misjudged. So I need to get a bracelet that says, what would Charlie do? Mm -hmm. That's what I got to do. WWCD. I'm pretty sure. My daughter will make one of those friendship bracelets that says WWCD, and I'm going to wear it. Oh, and we'll see how it goes. that's great. That's great. It'll never <laughs> steer you wrong. Unless it does, then uh, Miles's idea is what led to it. Like Charlie's second. Miles's this whole, idea. This whole comedy thing doesn't work out, Charlie. You just need to go work at an old folks home, and you will be... They will love you. I've done some shows at old folks' homes. They love you, don't they? Fond du Lac old folks' home, yeah. <laughs> F D L. Well, Charlie, when are you coming to H. to Texas? When are you coming to Dallas? Because you keep saying you're going to come, but we haven't seen it yet. I know. I did Dallas uh, years and years ago. I got to get back there. Um, I'm figuring that out. I thought we had Texas on this spring run. I guess we didn't. I know we're looking at some Austin dates. Probably in the fall, I'd say. <laughs> 
You know? Yeah, time to come back. That is yeah. code for he has no fucking clue. I don't, actually. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what I'm doing until I look at my calendar that day. I'm a child when Yeah, Charlie, rumor is that you're going to be, you're dating someone, so you're going to be dating someone that you're not going to want to come to Dallas anymore. No, that's not true. That's not true. Yeah, I, I, I am. Where'd you, where'd you hear that rumor? Oh, I guess we talked about it on the podcast, yeah. didn't we? Well, uh, there's the rumor is like the rumor is that you're dating this girl, Laura. No. And she posted a picture because I follow her. Oh, and God. she posted a picture of her boyfriend like hiding the face. And so everyone was like, oh, that's Charlie. Oh, that's Everybody so knows funny. it. Laura is a very, very dear friend of mine. Um, but you know, I, I almost hesitate to even address it given the fact that all the <laughs> conspiracy around it just gets our views going up higher. So, um, uh, no, uh, so my, she's not the girl, huh? No, no, no. My, um, my girlfriend lives in, uh, Columbus, Ohio. Oh, yeah. well, nice. see when you come to Dallas, Charlie, you can bring her. I will bring her. I'll see. She she's a very busy, uh, hardworking gal herself. So she sometimes she is hard for her to come on the road with me. But maybe I can conv- convince her to Dallas. It's beautiful this time of year. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. No. Not today. It's hot. Uh, well. Well. I'll come when it's beautiful there. All right. Well, good thing that maybe she'll have a really nice mother-in-law. And she won't have to have the same issues. <laughs> yeah, her mom is very nice. Her mom is no, very her nice. mother in law. Well, so your mom. Her oh, my mom. So your mom. My mom and her get along great. They really do. Oh, so, great. So, yeah. Your grandma Sue, by the way, is the freaking funniest lady ever. I love Grandma Sue. Isn't she a hoot? I. She is. I love your episodes on your podcast where you. Where you have Grandma Sue on there? I love it. I really, truly do. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, she's uh, she's a she's a good time. We're going to the casino. We're supposed to go uh, in the next uh, couple weeks here, so maybe we'll do another one of them. Yeah, I just listened to that one with Lubricant Lois. <laughs> yep, oh Lubricant Lois. Yep, that's how it goes, folks. You hang out with uh, you know the the 80 year olds. They start talking about lubricant and. Wa- uh, watching the submarines at Stinky Point. Well, listen, right. I I think we had a, a really good convo today. I feel like, you know, you've got some things to look into, specifically passenger pi- pigeons and donkeys. And um, <laughs> worst case scenario, just do Miles' advice. That's what I always say. Yeah, I will. I, su- I sure appreciate you guys talking to me and yeah, I picked up my daughter. She wants to say hi. Oh, yeah. Hi. Oh, my God. Hi. What is your name? My name is Annie. Annie? Yes, sir. Annie. I like that name. That's my wife's name, too. Yeah, it's a good name. <laughs> Annie, you, you help your mom be nicer to your grandma somehow, okay? Annie, would you say that your grandma was really nice to your mom? Oh, yeah, she is. Grandma, not my mom, dad's mom. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, <laughs> we've settled it. Yeah. See, we solved scratch, it already. Scratch everything we said. It's all in your head. <laughs> you, you, you said no more problems, I guess. There, you know, what's that? Oh, she just said I've been trying to call you lots of times. <laughs> oh, well, we're glad that you finally came through. And uh, Annie, be good for your mom, all right? Make sure you do uh, all yes, all your chores, okay? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. I sure appreciate it. Yeah, watch out for Mule Deer, all right? <laughs> all right, you tell your folks I says hi. <laughs> Real good. We'll do. Tell your mother-in-law we says hi. Charlie, I think we I think we got to do some shirts. WWCD. WWCD. Maybe some bracelets. <laughs> it's it's kind of a uh, WWCD. It sounds like a different kind of chronic wasting disease. <laughs> you <know? laughs> do you have WWCD? <laughs> if you or somebody you know has been affected with WWCD, call Nicolay Law now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Class action lawsuit. It's, it's a commercial. It's just like, do you suffer from WWCD? And then it's just like old people doing stuff. 
Old you know? people looking at birds. It's like do 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 music, and then at the end, it's like Sky Rizzy <laughs> for moderate to severe WWCD. <laughs> <laughs> Just so inventing cool. cocktail shit. <laughs> Should we take another caller? Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who is calling in today? Hey, uh, this is Stefan giving you guys a call. How are you doing? Stefan. We're doing good, my man. Stefan. Did nice I say point. it wrong? Stefan? No. No, nope. you got it right. Oh. Okay, Stefan. Well, where are you calling in from? What are you up to? I'm uh, calling from Colorado, and I'm just at work right now. What part of Colorado, Stefan? Uh, Gunnison. It's way up in the mountains, far, far from Denver, from the Front Range. There you go, mountain man. Stefan the mountain man, where where yeah. do you work at? Uh, I work at a university as a custodian, which is uh, kind of a lead into my question for you guys. Sure. Well, let's dive into it. All right. So I work as a custodian at a university state job. Very, very nice. Worked my whole life for small businesses. Don't really want to go back to that again. And uh, my wife graduates in and we're looking to move to Michigan. And when I get to Michigan, I, uh, I do have a set of skills that allows me to work on fireplaces. He's got a so very... I could start my own company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I could start my own company and uh, do fireplace repair, and but I just really don't like dealing with customers, <laughs> and I know that that's a massive part of it, and at my state job as a custodian at the university, I just get to work by myself all day, and uh, nobody really bothers me as long as I get my work done, so... All right, let's I back just, it up. Uh, let's back I, let's back it up here. You said you you said I've been working for small businesses my whole life, which leads me to think he's yeah. 50 years old. He How old are you? 28, 29. Uh, 30, 37. Okay, okay. Decade off. So you said that your girlfriend or your wife <laughs> is in school? <laughs> My, yeah, my wife is about to graduate uh, this spring, and then we're going to relocate from Colorado to Michigan. Do you work at her school? I do work at the university. And uh, okay, dude, it's just a side note, I would, I would, side note, highly recommend anybody uh, to work at a university because the spouses get free college. I knew it. I knew it. That's awesome, dude. I didn't even know that was a loophole you could do. That's cool. So you're doing oh, the custodian yeah, yeah. and you're getting paid money, but then also her tuition. Hell yeah. Question for you about the yeah, custodial job. Do you ever, uh, Look, when you're here. cleaning up a classroom, do you ever uh, like see an unfinished math problem on the chalkboard and just finish it for funsies? <laughs> Uh, no, but I got a couple other little things that, uh, that they don't mean much to you guys or anything. It's an inside joke between me and my deaf brother, but he's got a little saying that I'll always scribble on the whiteboards what around is it? the classrooms. And they, they, uh, it's E by Bo, O Shisha Bo. It doesn't really mean anything, but like I said, he's uh, deaf, so his English is very slurred, and it's just kind of a funny inside joke between us. Well, that's fun. But that's I'll go. Ar- like I'll go. <laughs> nice, Michael Scott. I'd love to meet him someday. <laughs> um, What's the okay. weirdest thing you've found uh, being a custodian at the university? You find any interesting paraphernalia? Uh, no paraphernalia that I can recognize myself. I did, uh, the gymnasium was renovated a long time ago and I used a ladder to climb up to a little access port and, uh, got in underneath the bleachers. That's all, uh, it's all been renovated. The bleach uh, underneath the bleachers of the old locker rooms and the old showers and stuff. And none of it's been used for 20, 30 years. So it's pretty creepy underneath there. And uh, I used to try to ghost hunt in the uh, administration building. There was a big auditorium in there. It's a very old school. Not, never had anything happen, now, unfortunately. Yeah, so weird. I'm uh, very, very low key at the university. But that's not to say that there are other people don't have ghost stories from walking around the old buildings. Yeah. When you went into the old locker room, you see any like jock straps and stuff? How how abandoned was this thing? Uh, no jock straps. I went in there because I heard there was toilets in there 
And as a custodian, you know, I got to see how clean they are. <laughs> so I hopped up in there. No, no, no toilets. No this toilets. is the just kind of custodial em- work em- 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 that we need. Space. We need, there's not, yeah, a, well, there's, there's not a toilet you won't get at to clean. I like that about you. Any, anybody can clean what they see. You know, it's the real custodians get in there and clean what people don't see on a daily basis. What's the most annoying thing people are spitting in the urinals these days? Uh, those freaking Zen packs that everybody likes. They're, they're just always in the stand up urinals. And if I could get people to stop just spitting them in there. It would make my life. A why lot don't easier. you do a? Why don't you do a side cart? They got them for tampons. Why don't you do a side cart trash I, can by the urinal and then just write on there Zin disposal? Yeah. People would actually, I think, use that. That's, I Miles. That's a fantastic plan, and I just might bring that up to my boss. This, ladies and gentlemen, I, I love that. We interrupt your regularly scheduled bellied up podcast to bring you a bellied up PSA. All you Zinfandels out there need to stop spitting your mouth pillows in the urinals. Okay. Hardworking men and women are sick of cleaning your shit out of the pisser. How does that sound? Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, and I, I'm very lucky. I only deal with the athletes. I'm in the athletic building but I hear some horror stories that come from the dorm side of uh, my coworkers. And luckily, lot, luckily I'm just assigned. A lot of clock I'm shower drains is what I hear. Right. Right. Are the athletes doing the zinnies too? So, eh, I think so. I think that's about as deep as they go. I don't, uh, you know, intermingle too much with the athletes. They do their thing and I do mine. You know, I let them, let them win, come away with the dubs, and I clean up after, you know? That's what's up. And getting that free tuition. I don't, so, you know, you're talking about yeah, having exactly. to, so your your wife wants to move after she graduates. Is that a pre, like you're doing that? Right. Or, because it sounds like you got a pretty sweet gig going on. So, and she's going into fish biology, and there are some fish up here, but um, the long of the story short, we live in a condo HOA. We don't own any of the land and what we can get for that. We can buy a small mansion and about a few hundred acres in Michigan. Yeah. you so can. We want to leave Colorado. I've been out here for 20 years. I'm originally from Michigan, but I've lived here for 20 years. The things I love to do when I moved here, not that into it anymore. Ready to move on to other things, do some walleye fishing, Hell do yeah. some bow fishing, so I know, I know Miles can relate. I'm getting a little older. The beer's starting to hit a little heavier. So yeah. climbing a mountain for four miles, shooting an elk, and then putting it on my back and walking out is a lot less appealing when yeah. I'm 37 as opposed to when I was 18. Yeah, you just got to get a deer stand and fall asleep in it. That's what it's all about these days. That's Exactly. Exact. Yeah, I was listening to one of your other podcasts. You're coming up with some sort of alarm system to warn you <laughs> for when deer come around. I'm at might have to uh, get on that. Yeah. Now, uh, I, why don't you just get a custodian job in Michigan? Well, so I want to be a little bit more free. It, 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 the, so the thing about the state job that I love is just off the bat, I get 10 paid holidays. So that's 10 days of the week. I don't got to come in and I get paid. And then I get nine paid vacation days. That's basically an entire month out of the year. Off the bat, I'm getting paid to not come into work. Yeah. So that's pretty nice. And, uh, and, but with, I have another friend who started his own fireplace business who I used to work with. He broke off and started his own company. It's about the same level of knowledge and experience. And he does very, very good for himself. Um, doing, you know, just fixing gas fireplaces, doing chimney sweeps. You know, I'm sure lots of wood burning fireplaces in Michigan. Um, I want you know, you if to I can ask- make a couple hundred bucks. I want you to ask him though, how many paid holidays does he get? As if he, if, um, I go hunt, I go elk hunting with him, and he didn't want to work there, so he just didn't schedule any any appointments for two weeks. But he's not getting paid. So, yeah, but he, but the money that he makes up while he is working is enough for him to kind of take a two week vacation, yeah. kind of whenever he wants to. If I if I work for somebody. And, you know, I get into the whole having to plan the PTO and stuff. And if I work for myself, if I can make enough money, 
then I could just, you know, hey, I want to drive to Colorado for two weeks and go elk hunting. I can just leave. Dude, you're sitting pretty, man. You're moving to Michigan with your wife, who's a friggin' fish biologist. She's going to tell you the best walleye spots, spots you didn't even know when you grew up there. That's awesome. And you're going to have your own fireplace business. That's great. The big problem, you don't want to talk to people. So that's you just <laughs> you talk to people initially. You got to talk to people initially, figure out, you know, deal with the chatty Cathy's, the whatnot. You're from Michigan. You know how to do it. And then eventually you get good enough. You hire some fella, you know, to do all the talk chit chatting for you. Um, but I don't think you're going to get around talking to folks when you're in their house in the Midwest, you walk into somebody's house to do their yeah. fireplace. You're going to be eating their cookies. You're going to be chit chatting with them about, you know, their day. I don't think you're going to get away from that unless you bring, you know, your guy there on site to handle right. all the small talk. Oh uh, yeah. That's not bad. I don't mind the small talk. It's just, as a, like I said, I worked in the customer service for a long time too at uh, some dispensaries and stuff. And it's just, I want to get away from the somebody just wanting something from you. And I know that's basically the exact opposite of what a business owner, because the business owner provides the service. So yeah, and I could, really, I just need to figure. You know, I know you're. Th you're it's, it's, this is what happens. There's a lot of uh, business owners that go, "Hey, if I can just get to this point." Then I can take my two week vacation. But what I, the thing I would say against business ownership is it's hard to turn it off, right? It's hard to do a vacation, and Charlie, you know this, without thinking about work at all. Where I imagine now it's pretty easy on when you're uh, taking your vacation and not even think about those toilets under the bleachers at all. So that's something to think about too oh. the mental work that goes into owning your own business. It's tough to turn off. Are we right. just going yeah. to just... blow past the fact oh, that yeah. you worked at a dispensary? <laughs> I just figure well, we don't I, have to blow past. We don't have to metaphorically blow past anything. I just figure everyone who lives in Colorado has worked at a dispensary at some point. Just I suppose. Like, you know. I suppose it's 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 a lot more hype. Uh, it's a lot more hype than what you think it would be. But it's not a bad job. But I'm glad that I left the entire industry as a whole. Uh, how many times have you had to answer the question? Yeah. So what's going to get me high but not paranoid? <laughs> oh my gosh! I don't even want to go there. Hey, what, what's going to get me can, high can, but not what, like what, put me to sleep? Well, it's the highest THC. Just give me the highest THC percentage. They come back a day later. This sucked. Well, you just asked me the worst question that you could ask me. So, what question should people be asking when they walk into a dispensary? Uh, I always like to just guide people off of smell. Like if you smell something and it, you know, cues everything in your brain, then that just go with that. You know, if you smell something and. And you go, eh, maybe not that one. Well, smell something else and go with that one. I like that. That's actually how dating so, goes. It's, uh, <laughs> it's all, it's all, you guys right? laugh, yeah, but that's how, that. that's how pheromones, pheromones. work, Charlie. <laughs> oh, you think I'm joking, but no, I'm being serious. I'm not. A bu so a buddy of mine went to this party completely uh, unrelated to anything. He was dating and I, I forget where, but they did a pheromone party where you would wear your shirt for a day without deodorant and put it in a bag. And then you would go around and smell the bags. And that's how you selected your partner was it just off the, you, you selected them like a deer. <laughs> and you know? how did that go? Uh, that's a very intriguing experiment. Yeah. I mean, I haven't showered today. You want to smell? No, no. Um, I don't think he's with the gal, but you know, I don't remember. You got to choose your weed like you choose your your date. Yep. Just give them a sniff test. <laughs> or how you choose. Or just find out. Or you go ahead. Just find out what you like and grow it yourself. Th there it is. I don't think I can put my that's, stamp of approval on that advice here in, in North Dakota. I mean, we grow it, weed in North Dakota. It, we, we, Sorry, cut you maybe. off. You get, a, you, get enough, you get enough charcoal filters and you can grow anything. <laughs> Sage, <laughs> sage wisdom right there. Um, so yeah. what do you think? You think you're going to deal with the little customer service you got to do and be a fireplace man? Chimney sweep? Yeah, I think 
Yeah, I think I might go back to the chimney sweeps just because the idea of making my own schedule and all of that is very appealing to me. And, you know, if I can just kind of make, and uh, you know, I'm not going to get into the details of it, but being a custodian isn't the most lucrative yeah. positions on the planet. And but, I think that you gotta, um, when I try and make a tough decision, I first look at, well, what's the worst case scenario? Worst case scenario, you start up this business, you don't make any money and you can go be a custodian again. Right. Right. Yeah, true. I mean, I've been looking a lot of places I hired for custodians, so I and can definitely the, get in it. I got more than enough experience. Yeah, and the upside is you start your own business, it goes really well, and you're uh, living the real business owner life. You get vacation, all that stuff. So might as well give it a try. That's, that sounds like a pretty good plan. I think I might go along with that. You should come up with the Santa Claus package oh, where dude. you make their chimneys wide enough. Dude, we just man. looked it up, and what? the University of Michigan is hiring a custodian right now. Oh, we got your backup plan right well, here. That, backup our, plan. That's where my wife wants to go to grad school, so I'll get a job dude, as a custodian there. She dude. goes to grad school for free. Hold there the, you got it, Well, we got to make sure he qualifies. You must have a high school diploma or GED. Right. You got those? Absolutely. Ability to effectively communicate and follow instructions from coworkers, supervisors, customers, and facility managers. Oh, yeah. This okay. next one is huge. Okay. okay. I wanted to this read it. This might be the linchpin of the whole thing. Do you have the ability to wear a backpack vacuum for up to eight hours a day? How's your sciatica? Uh, it's fantastic, man. Like I said, I'll uh, put on a backpack and go hiking up a mountain to carry an elk down, so... Oh, yeah. Say that in the interview, dude. Say that in the interview. This is Michigan. They're going to be so impressed. They're going to be like, oh, yeah, how big was that elk you got there? Is that like our white tails? And you're going to be like bigger. And then that'll be fun. Right. Uh, what else, Miles? Uh, yeah. uh, ability to effectively clean maintain areas that are located in various positions, including several feet off the floor, close to the floor and under around obstacles. Oh, yeah. I already do that. Perfect. Uh, one of the responsibilities, basic custodial duties, including cleaning restrooms, picking up debris on the floor, cleaning offices, and finishing math problems on the chalkboard. <laughs> and it sounds like you got all those boxes checked. And also take zins of uh, urinal. Got that, too. Yeah, that's, yeah, circle it back to the beginning. Zins out of the urinal. Let's not forget that. All right, benefits. Do we have uh, free tuition here? I'm not seeing it. Uh, yeah, and and grad school is different from undergrad, so huh? You might want to call and make that sure is, you, you, your first question isn't, "Can we go to school here for free?" Right. Yeah, the university that I work for now did not offer free grad school for spouses, but they just changed it last year to allow that. So, oh. well, um, there you have it. <laughs> unfortunately, I'm. I, Unfortunately, the school does not offer a master's program in biology, so she cannot do that here. The University of Michigan really hates regular vacuums. There's another thing about that you need to be able to use a vacuum. Back, a backpack vacuum. I so, I mean, it's I you might have to brush I up on your backpack vacuum skills. But Miles, I use a backpack vacuum on a daily basis, man. I get to pretend I'm a Ghostbuster, yeah. and walk around, and just <laughs> I just I just bust the dirt off of the floor. That's awesome. Hey, the the, 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 per, the professor say, who are you gonna call? You're gonna call Stefan the custodian. <laughs> Stefan the custodian. Uh, is there any job you have to cross <laughs> streams with to clean up? You and another custodian just crossing streams. Is that how you get the zins out of the urinal? I keep going back to that. Uh, only, uh, no, we don't ever have to cross streams. Do you guys have a <laughs> pair of Zin tongs in your little cart to pull them out of the urinal? Uh, you know, I got uh, some uh, the latex gloves that I wear, and oh. I'll just, you know, fl I'll, I'll flush it a couple times, and then I use the toilet cleaner clean it all out and then i'll just pick them out with my hand because you know whatever you got to invest in one of those dinosaur it's clamper it's, it's just things. a rubber glove yeah oh i got those too but i i use those for something else uh, we'll talk about that on a different podcast i think the university of michigan the guy who invented backpack vacuums must have graduated from there or something I mean, yeah. they put it in there like five times <laughs> probably put that in his 
in his will there. Well, I'm full. Well, well man, well, thanks for well, calling well, in. It, and it, all. Oh, what'd you say? Oh, oh, oh. oh. If I'm moving back to the Midwest, I got to get used to this Midwest capacity. So we got at least 15, 23 more minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure that all the callers waiting on the line will love that from you. Hey, I got paid for for uh, to wait, and it was great. You know, <laughs> I was just hanging out. I was scrubbing the floor, taking a little cleaner, clean the bleachers. There's a big track event coming up. Got to make sure, get get the inside scoop on what schools have what lanes, lay down some greaser, keep it going, you know, get the edge. Home, fi- home field advantage is uh, a term not to be taken loosely. Okay, I, I like, like that. that. Yeah, turn up the heat in the visitor's locker room, Watch. stuff like that. Yeah. Watch, I'm going to get a call from the NCAA now. <laughs> the NCAA is a sham anyway, so. <laughs> I know. You, yeah. You, well, you don't got to talk to you. Star quarterback. We don't, we don't need to discuss it. Yeah, I could have went pro, but the NCAA fucked me. So. <laughs> well, now they got all the deal. Even if you're Division two, you can make money off. Yeah, of I could have made so, like 400 I mean, bucks a year. That. Well, imagine now that you're famous, imagine the jersey sh- jersey sales that they'd have to go back and they'd be just printing off my pleasure jerseys like nothing <laughs> wow look at that he got the pronunciation right and everything yeah it was close mon plaisir uh, uh, all right well long time well, listener first time caller no yeah. big deal. well thank uh, you well i oh i gotta go home for lunch so i gotta <laughs> get i gotta just get that one all right all well, right be good now in, guy well, well, all right. Well, uh, thanks for uh, taking my call and convincing me to start my own business. So if you guys have any fireplace questions, uh, don't hesitate to give me a call. All right. Sounds good, man. See ya. All right. See you guys. Nice good guy. guy. <laughs> nice guy. You know, like He actually seems like a guy I'd want to sit around and drink beers with. He's got a good sense of humor. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a- ideas, ambitions. You know, he can work a freaking backpack vacuum. God bless him. Folks, spring is starting to warm up. Spring has sprung. Spring has sprung. Bring it in and get it done with some tippy cow. Do you like that rhyme (laughs) I did there, Miles? A little chocolate shake, tippy cow. When the weather starts getting warmer, I'm looking always for an ice cold glass of something, and I think we found it. I think we did. I think that's my favorite way to drink tippy cow is just pour it over ice, suck it on down, and enjoy the nice weather. And when I'm driving down those Wisconsin roads and I see those cows, I don't just say, hey, there's a cow. I say, hey, thanks, cow. Thanks for the tippy cow. Cheers. Oh, Bellied Up is presented, folks, by Nicolay Law. You see it right here on the old sneezer box. Uh, Trust the flannel clad experts for your legal needs from Wisconsin to North Dakota. They've got you covered. Stay safe. But if trouble strikes, Nicolay, they got your ass, folks. Visit NicolayLaw.com. Or just drive. Drive and you'll see them. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you're, you're driving. You can't go two miles in Wisconsin without seeing a Nicolay billboard. You got it. You see the beard. You see the sun goggles. We should throw that into our Midwest starter pack, Charlie. What's that? Nicolay billboard. That would be nice. Now, that would be a big pack, but uh, we'll make sure to uh, use a ratchet strap to secure it all. Yeah. Well, let's take some callers. Yellow. Here you are. Bellied up podcast. What's your name? Hello. Uh, I'm Patrick. Patrick? Yeah. Hi, Patrick. I met you, uh, at the, hi. I met you at the show in uh, Cedar Falls, Iowa. Oh, yeah. Cedar Falls. Nice nice of you to call in on this yeah. sucker. That's cool. What have you yeah. been doing since I saw you at the show? Nothing much. Good. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, why'd you call in today? Yeah, Patrick, yeah. what's on your mind? Well, well, I ha- actually have a list of what I'm calling in for. What'd you write it on, on Patrick? Uh, oh, on the notes app. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, one, um, uh, one of them is how to be less awkward and survive in middle school. Oh. So you're a middle schooler? Yeah. Okay. 
All right. Well, Charlie, were you an awkward middle schooler, Charlie? You know, I was a little bit of an awkward middle schooler. And Patrick, it's perfectly okay to be an awkward middle schooler. What grade are you in specifically? Um, I'm in eighth eighth grade. Shouldn't you be at school right now? When does school get done? Um, uh, at three oh five. Oh, so you're in the clear. There you go. There you go. All what right. Is, well, what, what is your after school activity? Um, uh, nothing. Uh, um, I usually uh, just uh, feed the dog and uh, just stuff like that. Okay. Feed That's the cool. Dog. Yeah. What well, kind of dog you got? Yeah. Uh, a golden retriever named Murphy. Murphy. Okay. I had a dog named Murphy once, yeah. Patrick. He he was a bird. Really? Yeah, he was a bird dog. He he, he is a. Um, what do he sound? What does bark sound like? He's like. Oh, 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 oh. That's what you sound like. What your dog bark sound? Is what does your dog bark sound like? Um, it, it's more like a buff or something like that. Let's yeah, hear it. Let's hear it. Oh, some, oh real like deep. That. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something deep. Something. That's good. That's more like the Joker, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is like the Joker. What does he say when he does that? Oh, wow. oh yeah. yeah. This is how the Joker says it. Like, like, uh, like I'm like a dog. Like, uh, no, if I caught one. Yeah. What would I do with a car if I caught it? <laughs> anyway, Patrick, see, we're being weird, you know, we're just uh, doing it. I think you embrace your awkwardness, you know, or, why do you uh, do you get do kids tease you for being awkward, Patrick? Uh, not really. Uh, I'm uh, six foot right now, so I could probably just step on the people if they're being mean. So. There you go. Put them in a headlock. There you go. There you go. Patrick. See, I was six feet in eighth grade, too, and then I stopped growing. So I know where you're at. You play any sports? Um, uh, I do uh, some uh, cross country, and I'm doing track this year. Nice, cool. High jumping? Uh, no. Oh, no field, just track. There you go. There you go. I like it. Um, <laughs> now one thing to remember about middle school is I know that it feels like it, it's really, really important, but whatever happens in middle school. It's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. No. What happens in middle school doesn't matter. What happens in high school doesn't matter. What happens in college doesn't matter. Nothing matters, Patrick. You got to don't even care. Well, let's have it be a little more uplifting than nothing matters. Oh, sorry. I forgot to lie. Everything matters, Patrick. Uh, You know, make sure you study hard and get your grades up. What what, what kind of guy are you? You got good grades? You good good at sports or are you kind of middle of the road? Uh, um, I'm uh, fairly smart, like with books and stuff. I uh, have straight A's, but with sports, um, uh, they uh, you might as well just put me in a corner with the coloring book. With the coloring book, <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe yeah. you're more of a statistician than you are a starting point guard. Yeah. There you go. We yeah. need someone keeping book. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, you're the guy who's like sitting there uh, doing the uh, th- things in the stands at the baseball game. You know. You're, yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's yeah. with a crayon. Now, um, one thing to remember yeah. is getting good grades. Getting good grades is fun and all. It's great. Should get good grades. Don't nice. remember to get a good grade in the uh, in the subject of common sense as well. Make sure that you're not uh, yeah. got your nose too much in the books. Get some street smarts too. Well, that's another problem. Uh, it feels uh, like I'm surrounded by idiots at school. Yeah, but that's like pro- it might be a little rude, but so yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're really smart, so everyone's going to seem kind of like idiots, and yeah. probably Charlie and I sound like babbling idiots to you right now. Yeah. Yeah. I would have been the kid not yeah. doing so well. Um, well, why do you think you're awkward, Patrick? If if you're trying to be less awkward, what makes you think you're awkward at all? Well, well uh, I'm not sure. It's kind of like I'm uh, I stutter once in a while. It's not like a serious thing. Uh, yeah. 
That's okay. And uh, well, let's I- see. and I and uh, I'm uh, raised by my mom. Uh, she just suggested me saying uh, "not a good dancer," so that might be a clue. Wait, your mom said you're not a good dancer. <laughs> uh, she wanted to be funny. So. <laughs> oh, is your mom sitting there? Uh, yeah. Well, Hi guys, yeah. I just walked in. Yeah, get her on the Sorry, line. We- we saw you in Cedar Falls. That, that was a great show. Thank you. Thanks for coming out to that. We're, we're helping uh, Patrick uh, be less awkward. <laughs> and that he's he's they, off to a great start. He hasn't been awkward on here at all. Yeah, he hasn't been awkward at all. He thought he was yeah. awkward. <laughs> and yeah, but, and uh, you might remember me because I met you after the show. Uh, you signed uh, my OPA. I was in. Y- uh, like the tealish sweatshirt. Yes. And, uh, I also got t-shirt kind. So you also what? Yeah, and I, uh, and I also got t-shirt signed. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it's good. I'm glad you. And I- so guys, I want to point this out. Um, Patrick is a drummer, so I think that's pretty. Cool. Patrick, uh, that's badass, no, uh, dude. You can't bury the lead there. <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, I play percussion in middle school, <laughs> and it's just because I can't play an actual instrument. All right. Oh, oh, no, no. It's, hey, hey, one, here's a life oh. lesson for you. Life, oh, yeah. life is all about marketing. <laughs> you don't say you play yeah. percussion in middle school. You say you're a drummer because drummers sound cool. Right? See? Oh, in, no, but in seventh grade year, I got the triangle. I only uh, got <laughs> notes. That's a big, that's we a, all, what's that? We all hold up our fingers as triangles for Patrick. <laughs> he, he said he, he plays the triangle. He plays the triangle and his family, his family does this. They hold I, up the triangle. <laughs> play the triangle. No, no. Great, uh, and, uh, they still call me Triangle Boy. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta own it, dude. You gotta start up your own TikTok channel called the Triangle Boy and just play different songs on TikTok on the Triangle. You'll go viral. Yeah, that's a great idea. Awesome. You just yeah, you just gotta own the Triangle Boy. And yeah. then and then all all the other families in the stands when you're playing your triangle as your family's holding up the triangles with their hands are gonna just think you guys are in the Illuminati, they won't mess with you anyways. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And uh I'm also known as the Tetris King because uh I play Tetris on my yeah, computer at school and I like every round I get a high score of like a hundred the lines. So Patrick, you are preparing yourself for adulthood when you have to pack the car. So, um, yeah. So what? 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 What town are you guys from? If you don't mind me asking, Cedar Falls. Cedar Falls. Uh, Mason. So, uh, no, we uh, drove in Cedar Falls. We live in Mason City. Oh, Mason, Mason City. Mason City. Okay, so it'd be like his WWE walkout, right? Yeah. He's from Mason uh-huh. City. He's six feet tall. He may have a tiny bit of a stutter, but I'm not going to stutter when I say he's the percussion master. He is the king of Tetris. He is the one, the only Triangle Boy. Patrick. Dun, 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 dun. Ding. So as long as you own it and you got good marketing around it, you yeah. can do anything. Uh, yeah. And uh, also, uh, you know how you uh, uh, do uh, the podcasts at different bars? Uh, I have a few uh, bar suggestions for you here in Mason City. Please let um, us know. Uh, um, uh, one of them uh, is uh, the Laredo's. They have great wings. And uh, the there's uh, the Moose Lodge, which uh, is basically uh, like a like a bar for old people. <laughs> well, it's fairly empty. But, yeah, it's a dive bar, Patrick. Well, Mom, you got to be proud that he knows the list of all the good bars in town in the eighth grade. I love that. Oh, uh, 
she left. She's oh. already disappointed. <laughs> yeah. She didn't like my intro. <laughs> That's when she left. Oh, uh, she was there for the intro, and then she left. Uh, there's a person uh, doing the flooring thing uh, here at our house, so uh, she's going to check out the flooring. Yeah, she said something about life being too short and cheesed it out of there. Yeah. Patrick, yeah. do you have any other questions on your notes app for us? Um. Uh, well, uh, when I was writing it, you uh, answered us. So the other one is uh, my sister is extremely moody. So <laughs> just, yeah. And how old is she? Uh, she's a... Uh, She's uh, 15. Uh, she's the type of person to say 15 and a half. So. <laughs> Patrick, I think you got a, a, a future as being a stand-up comic. I think you got that in you. Yeah, you just own the whole Triangle Boy stuff, the King of Tetris, talking about your sister. Uh-huh. You got a whole set in front of you. Yeah, oh. that's a great joke. My sister's yeah. the kind of person who says she's 15 and a half. So, She's 15, yep. but she's the kind of person that says well, she's 15. Well, you got to yeah. remember at her age, she's figuring it out and hormones and all that stuff. So maybe give her some slack. Yeah, yeah cut your sister yeah. some slack. We're, we're sure you're going to do that as soon as you get off this phone call, too. <laughs> yeah, some stuff that she uh, does, uh, like uh, she, she has a headache and then she's like, uh, no, I'm driving because she has your learner's permit. And then, no, she, like, uh, well, then uh, she's like, oh, well, uh, you can drive if you think it's so easy and stuff like that. Yeah, a little snarky <laughs> comments here and there. Yeah. Yeah, that's what and, sisters uh, are for, though, I think. That's their job. Yeah. Yeah, just teaching me patience. <laughs> Another one. Dude, you're killing it, man. Listen back to this episode. You've already written your fifth, first 10 minute set here. No, uh, I hate the sound of my own voice. So I'm going to uh, find out how long it, uh, this conversation was and then tell my Alexa to skip that amount. <laughs> Patrick, listen, everybody hates the sound of their own voice early in their life. All right. So just listen back. Yeah. It'll be funny. Um, start off uh, okay. that that uh, that triangle boy TikTok. I think that'll be real good for you. Okay. Yeah. And uh, another thing is uh, I um, uh, another time I called in, uh, um, I was on hold for an hour. You got to change the music. <laughs> like uh, you got. That's... You guys are great singers, so just do a, a compilation of uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, and you got to have old songs where the singers are already dead, so they can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you do up a triangle rendition for us, and we'll slap that on as the whole yeah. music. Yeah, you'll get a lot of royalties. Yeah, just- yeah, I'm just uh, going to play a journey, and then it's like ding, 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 dong. Boom. Then another thing, I forgot the lyric. Patrick, you got musical talent, you got comedy talent. I mean, yeah. what you can't you do? Talent. Yeah, you're a straight A student, you're six foot. Man, you got a bright future ahead of you, my yeah. guy. Oh, um, uh, Right now I'm in my room and I have the uh, signed t-shirts and hat. So uh, I think, uh, what should I do with it? Should I just, uh, I have two closets. So should I turn the second closet into a shrine or uh, what should I do? I like that. I, yeah, I, I'll just... do a shrine. You got to get some signed from Miles. Yeah. Miles will send something over okay. to you. That'll be nice. Yeah. <laughs> That'll yeah, be nice. Oh, uh, you can just uh, go to uh, Mason City, go to Laredo's. Uh, so we'll decide a day. Mom, are you recording? <laughs> your mom's recording you. This is for your real man. Hey, mom's back in the room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, guys. Um, yep. So how proud are you? You got uh, oh, to come closer. Yeah. You got to come closer. 
got all of his awkwardness for me. So there you go, bud. You're welcome. You're welcome. Mom, are you proud that your eighth grader knows all the good bars in town? Is that your doing? You know, we do it. We, That's my dad. <laughs> it's your dad's that, you know, we have to decide on the best wings. Yeah. It's all about the wings. Um, yeah, and the uh, Laredo's, they have some of the best ranch. There's a pizza place that has Napoleon's Neapolitan style pizza, and uh, their ranch is uh, like a more like still ranch. Oh, yeah. And uh, then there's a mall that's almost abandoned. Uh, you have abandoned malls in Wisconsin, too. Yeah. You go, do you go splunking around there, the abandoned mall? Um, uh, well, uh, at the abandoned mall, well, there's only uh, there's uh, just a few things keeping it alive. Um, uh, a place called the Sports, Sports Cage Bar and Grill, uh, X Drawing Place, uh, a hockey rink, and then a uh, Thai food place. Well, sounds like we gotta come to town, man. When we come to town to do belly ups, we'll we'll be uh, we'll be taking this into consideration quite a bit. All right, appreciate that. Uh, we'll, we uh, we could uh, meet up on a certain day. Yeah, yeah, at the bar. Yeah, then we could see that triangle uh, performance in person. Bring the triangle. Bring the jokes, Patrick. Bring your mom. And bring your sister. I want to hear your sister. Uh, I want to hear you roast your sister. Of course you want to see my mom. Your sister wants to be your mom? No, of course you want to see my mom. <laughs> God. Yeah, Charlie, what the hell, man? Patrick's just throwing me under the bus, you know? I came in thinking that Patrick was, you know, being bullied or something at school. Now I'm wondering if Patrick is bullying at the school. Is that what's going on here, Patrick? No. Good. No, uh, at, in the, for the lunch line, the seventh graders cut in front of me. Like, yeah, I don't have it in me to step on them, like, even though I want to. You're the gentle yeah. giant, my guy. You're the gentle giant. Yeah. Well, listen, we're gonna we're gonna keep her moving here, but do me a favor. Tell your mom I says yep. hi, okay? Uh, yep. And your dad yeah. too. Okay. Go to Laredo's. Laredo's, we got it, my guy. Thank you for calling in. Yep. yep. Watch for deer now. Nice kid. His parents must own Laredo's. They <laughs> <laughs> really plugging Laredo's. Really pushing that hard. I think if he just owned the triangle thing, people, you know, get behind it. I think he already bought that TikTok. I think we can see a lot of good things coming from Patrick. That's my hunch. Mm -hmm. Well, Charlie. Miles, another great episode. Hey, folks, don't forget, tip your bartender, okay? We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.